Hey, I'm Joe with Revzilla, and welcome to our series on how to remove wheels from motorcycles. Today, we're going to talk about how to remove wheels from adventure bikes. So there's a few different reasons you want to remove your wheels. You might need to replace your brake rotors, uh, your chain and sprockets, your wheel bearings, but most commonly it's going to be tires. Most motorcycle shops charge you less to have the tires mounted and balanced if you just bring them the wheels versus the entire bike. Also, Cycle Gear stores offer tire mounting and balancing at a discounted rate if you had bought the tires from Revzilla, Cycle Gear, or any of their partner stores, but they don't have any ways to remove wheels from bikes, so you will need to just bring them the wheels. So at the end of this video, you're going to be able to save yourself a few bucks, but you will need to invest in some tools to begin with to get the job done. Most commonly, it's just going to be large diameter sockets, wrenches, uh, some axle grease, a few rags. But what's cool about adventure bikes is a lot of them include tools. So my Tiger includes a cool toolkit that includes a large diameter axle wrench for the rear and also an Allen wrench to undo the pinch bolt for the front axle. The one thing that didn't include is this hex axle tool. Uh, this is the tool that you'll need to remove the front axle on a variety of different motorcycles. What's cool about this one, this one's from Motion Pro, it includes four different sizes that work with all different types of bikes. You'll see this type of axle on adventure bikes, touring bikes, dirt bikes, uh, sport bikes, you know, there's a wide variety of motorcycles that use this sort of axle tool to get the front axle out now. But in addition to that, you'll need a way to lift the bike. So sit tight, we're going to go over a few different ways to do that now. I do like to start on a safe level place to work on the bike to be sure it won't tip as I start to work on it. And another thing I like to do is break the axle nuts free or the axles free while the bike is still on the ground in case I need to put some extra force into it. I don't want to do that while the bike is up in the air. It's much safer to do that while it's still on the ground. And with my bike in particular, I have a center stand in place. So that makes it a lot easier to raise the bike up on the center stand to get the rear wheel off the ground for removal. Once I do that, to get the front wheel off of the ground, I use a simple scissor jack under the front part of my skid plate so that it takes the weight off of the front wheel for removal. So with these two items, it makes it really easy to get the wheels off of my adventure bike. Now with center stands, not all bikes come with them, but there's plenty available in the aftermarket. So you may want to go to revzilla.com and enter your bike's information into the bike finder to see if there's one available for your bike. So a great option to lift your motorcycle if you don't have a center stand or there isn't one available for your machine is one of these hydraulic motorcycle jacks. This one came from Harbor Freight for only about 80 bucks on sale. They're available under a few different names at different hardware stores and stuff, but man, these things work awesome. I've been using these type of stands for years. This one in particular has provisions for tie downs, which is really cool. So once the bike is up into place, you can strap it down for added security, which makes it really nice to work on the bike, knowing that it can't come off of the lift. One thing I will note is just be sure that the bottom of your motorcycle has a flat, sturdy place to lift it by. Like if you have a skid plate or there's some frame rails underneath your bike, some bikes, especially adventure bikes, the exhaust pipe runs down below uh, the engine itself. So that is not designed to bear the weight of the motorcycle. So be sure not to lift your bike by the exhaust system. One thing I will note is that really there's no need to lift the bike all the way up into the sky if you're just removing the wheels. It's a lot safer to keep the bike as low as possible on one of these just to get the job done. I just raised the wheels up off the ground just a few inches and it makes doing the job a piece of cake. So certain adventure bikes out there have a single-sided swing arm, the popular BMW or the Ducati Multistrada or just a couple examples. So that does make it a little bit tough to raise the bike, especially if you don't have a center stand. Specifically with a Multistrada, the last one I worked on didn't really have the best skid plate. So I ended up needing to use a single-sided swing arm lift here. A Pitbull offers one that's really awesome. They come up with a variety of different pin sizes to fit different axles, but if you have a single-sided swing arm bike, one of these stands is a really great option, the Pitbull single-sided swing arm stand. Now, in conjunction with that, if you don't have a way to lift the uh, center of the bike, again, if you have an exhaust system underneath that's not designed to bear the weight of the bike, a forklift stand like this one is a really good option. These just go under the, uh, the bottom of the fork legs, and as you lift the bike up, it takes the front wheel off of the ground. So these are great options for bikes that may be a little bit more difficult to lift in the other ways that I showed you already. So next up, we're gonna work on removing the axle so we can pull the wheels off the bike. With most bikes, it requires removal of the front brake calipers to get the front wheel off. And with the rear wheel, you're gonna be dealing with a drive chain. So be sure to refer to your service manual for any specific instructions regarding the wheel removal on your bike. 
So what I like to do before pounding the rear axle out, I like to back the axle nut off until it's only on by a few threads, and then I can hit the axle nut with a dead blow hammer, knocking the axle loose. And what that does is it protects the axle threads from being damaged, making it easier to put the axle nut back on afterward. With the front axle the way it is, once it's unthreaded from the left fork leg, it's pretty easy to slide the axle out to the right. So as you pull your axles out, it's really important to keep track of all your parts. You're going to be dealing with at least two axle spacers and the axle itself, of course. So don't go pulling the axle out all crazy and letting your wheel spacers fly all over the shop because sometimes they'll roll under the workbench never to be seen again. So it's a good idea to take some photos for reference later on. But what I generally like to do is lay a rag on the floor and as I pull the axle out slowly, I'll take each part that comes loose and put it down in order. So that it's really easy to tell how to put the axle back together, put the wheel back on the bike later on. But if you do lose track by, for any reason, you can always refer to your service manual. So now that you have your new parts or tires installed on your wheels, it's time to put them back on your bike in reverse order. Again, if you have any questions about that, all the information is in your factory service manual. It's very windy here, I apologize. So regarding the axles, just be sure that they're clean and regreased. That makes it a lot easier to work on your bike in the future. And also, I like to just snug up the axle nuts by hand while the bike is up in the air, and then torque them to factory spec when the bike is safely back on the ground. And considering your brakes, you may have pushed the pads into the calipers a little bit when you remove them, so be sure to pump your brake pedal and lever back up so that your brakes work properly before you go out for a ride. Also, consider torquing your caliper bolts to factory spec, which will also be specified in your manual. And regarding your chain, now is a good time to double check your tension and adjust as needed. And if you did get new tires installed on your wheels, just be sure to take it easy on them. They can be slippery when they're new. My rule of thumb is I usually burn one tank of gas through them before I really try to push them hard on the street. So hopefully now you have all the information you would need to pull the wheels off your adventure bike on your own. And if you'd like to know how to remove the wheels from any other type of motorcycle, check out my other videos where I cover cruisers, dirt bikes, and sport bikes. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to one of our gear geeks at 877-792-9455 or shoot an email to cs at revzilla.com. Thanks for watching our video today where we cover how to remove the wheels from an adventure bike. I'm Joe, and I'll see you next time.